I'm up there dolo. Sean walks up, me and son kicking it. I mean, we across the street from here, what? I'm leaning on the gate, talking to son, whatever, whatever. He's pull up five deep in the car. They all get out. They, they're they not too close, but they're not too far from us. They ain't gonna come up on me because son know I keep that thing on me. And... So you say y'all niggas used to hang up at Midwood High School even though none of y'all used to go there? Y'all just used to go up there? None of us, none of the is that, that, like from the DCEPs, none of them went there. Like none of them. And that just, that was the closest, like some of the girls that was decepting that, they went there. So, and that was the closest high school to us because Midwood was only like a 10 minute walk from from where most of us lived at. I'm on Flatbush in Newkirk. That's like a, that's, I, I hit, I hit Bedford in two short blocks and I walk up three blocks to Midwood. Matter of fact, a long, two long blocks and, and, and then I'm at Midwood. So you said you said back in the days you was up there and you was with the nigga Sean, the rapper Sean, and a nigga you knew tried to front on son. Niggas tried to yeah. front on son. Yeah, they they tried to act like they came there for me. So so basically, what happened was a nigga that me and him ain't really we ain't see eye to eye. We ain't get along. He thought he was a gangster, and and I just knew I was. So basically. Me and son ain't like each other from the first day that we met. And I was gonna pop son, but my, my, my man, Tragic, stopped me from popping son. And. But what you said happened? What, what happened the first time y'all met? So when we, me and son, me and this nigga, Auburn first met, like I had, it was on Avenue H and Ocean Avenue, right? Now this was our hangout spot too. At my man bigger crib, but it was him, his mom's, and his little brother. So his mom's, no, I mean everybody loved his mother. His mother loved all of us or whatever. And this particular night, I hadn't been there like in a minute. And this particular night, I went over there. I got the four ten on me. I got the four four slug inside the four ten, right? Because the four ten. It fit four four longs, it fit four five longs, and it fit um the four ten gauge. So we go there. I got it on me like like normal, and I'm talking to my my son tragic, and the nigga Auburn comes up and. I forgot like what type of gestures he made towards the nigga T, but I didn't know the nigga, so I didn't know he was playing. I thought this was like some real shit that was about to happen. And I spent, and when I spent, the nigga Tragic saw what I was about to do, and he grabbed me, he was like, nah, son, chill. That's Peoples, you know what I mean? That's my man, and he introduced us, but when he introduced us, son, son gave me that type of energy like, 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 fuck you. And I gave him that same type of energy back. So me and son never seen eye to eye since then. Like I said, son used to drive a, a little yellow Suzuki sidekick. And me and son, like I said, never seen eye to eye. Now son used to hang out with a few niggas from around there. And I was cool with two of the niggas out, his little five man crew. Right? So there was a nigga named Bam Bam that he used to hang with that lived in a bigger building. I was cool with Bam Bam because Bam used to come up the bigger crib all the time. And Bam Bam was cool with bigger little brother, Greg. So rest in peace to bigger too. And um they used to be um real good friends, so I knew the nigga Bam real good. But this was his little crew. And then a nigga named Ace used to live in the next building from them. I was cool with Ace, 
But like I said, I was more cool with Bam. I knew Ace. We spoke. Always been like cordial and cool with each other. We never hung out or nothing like that. Or we never like, you know what I mean, dealt with each other in that type of manner to where we was like real good friends and we was cool. Auburn, Auburn, like I said, I never, from that first day, I never liked son. So me and him never like, we never was around each other besides that one time. I mean, we would see each other and be in the same vicinity, but me and son never like did nothing together, spoke to each other. We would see each other. I walked past him, he walked past me. So, and matter of fact, I just thought about it too. Son had one of them back in the days. Remember, Ricky Lake was on back in the early nineties. Son was on one of them. One of the was it Ricky Lake? It was either Ricky Lake or yeah, I don't know why I was about to say shit. Jenny Jones. Jenny but, Jones. Um, Jenny Jones. That's who it was. But you said it wasn't. Jenny you said, Jones. It was definitely Jenny Jones. Yep. He was on one of them shows with, with two broads or whatever, whatever. But um, like I said, me, I'm at Midwood High School. None of the peoples is up there. I'm up there dolo. Nigga Sean walks up, me and son kicking it. I mean, we across the street from Midwood. I'm leaning on the gate, talking to son, whatever, whatever. These niggas pull up five deep in the car. They all get out. So two of the niggas, the two twins, they go stand behind the nigga, um, Sean. Now, I don't know if son peeping like what's going on, but I'm peeping it. So the other three niggas, which is Bam, Ace, and the nigga Auburn, they in front of us. They, they not too close, but they not too far from us. They ain't gonna come up on me because son know I keep that thing on me. And he just ain't gonna play me that close. I don't know what they got on them. I'm pretty sure at least one of them had something. But um, like I said, two standing behind the nigga shine. I'm leaning on the gate, sun right next to me, like probably two feet away. These niggas is in front of us like 10, 15 feet. And the nigga, Auburn is the one talking. He like, yo, I heard you was looking for me. I'm looking at the nigga and I'm like, looking for you. Fuck, I'm looking for you for. I was like, nah, I heard you was looking for me. And the nigga was like, yo, if I was looking for you, I know where you live. They would have just found you laid out. So I laughed at the nigga. So when I laughed at the nigga, whatever, whatever, he started asking me, so, so who told you that? I was like, don't worry about who told me that. So the twin niggas is, is behind the nigga shine, like doing they, like they head, they chin, like trying to say it was him that told me that the nigga Auburn was looking for me or whatever, whatever. So I peeped it and I'm like, it wasn't son, son ain't tell me nothing. like. So they basically trying to say, yes, he did, yes, he did. So I'm like, nah, son ain't tell me nothing. So, you know what I mean? I think the whole thing was a plot to do something to the nigga Sean. Because, like I said, the twin niggas, they never came and stood behind me or even close, like, that close to me. They was how behind old, son. How old you said y'all was around this time? I'm like, I'm 17. So son, nigga Sean, like third, about 14, maybe 15, somewhere around there. And the nigga Auburn, probably about 18, 19. I don't, I don't, I don't but, really but know did how, you, how but old did you son actually, is. But you actually did hear that, that he was looking for you? Um, I think I did, yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I did hear something like that. And um, but but it wasn't sh it wasn't Sean that told you. Nah, nah, Sonny never tell me that. Sonny never tell me. That's why I, I like I said even if it was him, I wouldn't have been out of I wouldn't have been like yeah he told me and what. 
I'd have been, I'd have still said, nah, it wasn't son that told me, but fuck it, who told me? If you want to do something, like, that was, that was my whole attitude. Son ain't tell me, but my whole attitude was like, it don't matter if a nigga told me or not. What do you want to do? It's five of y'all, it's two of us. You don't know what I got on me, which I ain't have nothing on me. This day, I ain't had nothing on me. I'm pretty sure one or two of them got something on them. Maybe, maybe not. But they so, I ain't gonna say scared, but they on point to where, okay, we know this nigga always got something on them. So if we do something, it's gonna be, somebody gonna get hit. Not know it, my nigga, if y'all rush us right now, I ain't got nothing. We just gonna be fighting. I know son gonna fight. I know the nigga Sean gonna fight. He know I'm gonna fight. So now it's gonna be between me, Ace, and the nigga Auburn. All of us skinny at this time, my nigga. But I know for a fact, y'all niggas ain't been through what I've been through. Y'all ain't had the amount of fights I done had. Win, lose, or draw, my nigga. For a skinny nigga, I hit hard. Check it. Remember I told you Sid was leaning on the on the on the train door with the nigga Bucker talking shit. I don't know what was being said when you I don't know what exactly was said because I was sitting across the train, you feel me? But this nigga knows what did that nigga say to make them niggas wanna fight, son? Nigga was like, nigga looked at me, nigga was like, hey yo, on your head, nigga spread out. Nigga said that ghost, nigga said that ghost face nigga line? That ghost face shit, the niggas was looking at him, nigga was just laughing, nigga was like, yo, fuck you looking at? <laughs> nigga said, <laughs> so for the record, what caused the fight between them niggas on the train that day is nigga said, said that ghost face line, hey yo, on your head, nigga spread out and parlay. You heard? That's what that's what popped it off, my nigga. So that's for the record. Hey, I I, I I got one for you, and you can clip this and put this on a gem pop jump. This a uh, South Carolina jump. They tried to get me with this because they thought I was green because I was white, but you know I wasn't taking shit from nobody. And and this is literally taking shit, not uh not not uh taking guff or whatever. So like what what they do is you you be standing somewhere right, and a cat would come running around the corner. And they used to have these pin pinner joints rolled up in Bible paper, and then they put them on this like long Scotch tape roll, and uh, not not the Scotch tape, but the thicker clear tape. You know what I mean? And then they ball it up and, and and make it like a little egg that you know they could boof it if they had to. And so the cat would come around the corner and be like, "The COs is chasing me. Hold this for me." And, and, and if you took it, they come back and like when it happened to me, I was like, "No, nah, I'm good. I don't want nothing to do with it." But but if you took it they'd come back to your room later and unroll the joint and there was never any joints in there you know what i'm saying so so now you owe these cats this shit and and this used to be uh like they ain't call them booty bandits but that would be like a major play for for uh cats that, that, that thought that they could they could they could get get up in a young and that that, that that was green and shit you feel me mm. but yeah that, that 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 was a that was an og classic in south carolina in the south carolina <laughs> penitentiary system and nigga, I'm running around the corner like, yo, bowlers, bro. Nigga be like, nah, my nigga, I have four motherfucking joints up in there, my nigga. Niggas would do that shit just for money. Niggas oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, money. like, sometimes it'd be a rich dude, you know, because sometimes, you know, it'd be like a rich motherfucker been, been in there for some dumb shit, some killed somebody while they, while they was drunk driving. And, and you know, they rape, you know, they rape and they commissary. It ain't necessarily always about trying to, uh, you know fuck them or whatever you know a lot of times it's about money but but that it was definitely like uh how you be calling them booty bandit that that booty band has definitely pulled that shit one a, a, a lot you know what i mean yeah man, that's a, that's a treacherous that's a treacherous thing bro i mean you don't use don't take nothing for nobody don't run your mouth don't gamble you know pre, you pretty much gonna be good that's a fact you know, but motherfuckers will try to get over on you. Like that's for that's for show. Sure. Like hardly anybody is ever gonna come come up to you and start talking to you just because you're so fucking interesting. They 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 run a game of some sort. Yeah, 
I remember I walked into a fucking Chinatown uh, store. I don't know what the fuck I was going in there looking for. Mixtapes or something. Walked into a Chinatown store. Niggas had a little fucking uh, little thing in the back. A little gambling thing in the back with some two mob niggas. Like two Italian old school mob niggas. My nigga. It's my word, bro. Me and my bro Chuck Burns, we had like. 400 we had like 400 dollars on us between the both of us mm-hmm. niggas was like yo you want to play you want to you want to try your luck at this game right i forgot what, what game was it i forgot which game it was but it was it, it was it was one of those move shit around shit you feel me and real talk bro i got an eye for that shit where i be catching that ball when niggas be moving it around but the real scammer scammers they find a way to make that ball disappear with some cut hole in the motherfucker. Panels in the table, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that. So I bet on that shit, my nigga. Me and my man. We, they, he let us win a couple of times, my nigga. I got greedy. And I kept playing. That nigga got us for like 300 cash, bro. Real talk. And at that time, three hundred probably split. hurt, right? I mean, we was broke niggas. Even if it was, you know, if regardless of what, we was broke niggas. Like at the time, we was both ex felons, just came home from the pen. We was fucked up. You understand what I'm saying? So we got got for like three hundred, my nigga. We came out that shit. The feeling I had, I wanted to punch one of them niggas in their face, but I knew they had hammers in that store. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. And they was mob niggas, mob, mob niggas, you could tell. You feel what I'm saying? I was like, Shh. I said, yo, I would never, ever gamble again. From that right there, just from the, the feeling that I felt from getting got, because I know them niggas got us. You understand what I'm saying? For that 300, bro. Word. Shit, you know that made man since 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 his stories that that, that made me think of some. You, you you ever heard of this shit called Madness in DC? Nah, what's that? It, it's a clothing brand. I don't know if it's still there, but it, it, it used because like DC was different than everyone else. Like we never really was was rocking like a Nietzsche or like that Echo shit. Like you go to Baltimore, Richmond, they wearing none but like what they think New York people is wearing. But it's really shit that like cool people in New York ain't wearing anyway. But, I mean that's neither here nor there. We we had our own little companies. And one of them was like the Madness store. It was uptown at, uh, by by Howard and all that shit, like Georgia Avenue, which is a pretty infamous little area. But it's also kind of safe, if that make any sense. And uh, I, I was in the Madness store, and I had an Eddie Bauer. This like 1998, and, and, and I don't know if y'all got into EBs, but they like North Faces, and the ones that everybody oh, wanted. My man Vaughn P that be on the channel, he, he was telling me how. Eddie Bauer was that shit going crazy in DC at one time. Yeah, so I I, I had a, the the real one you wanted was a bear, and the most rare one was the one with the thermometer. So so I I, I had a bear with a thermometer, and and one one thing about them was they had little zipper pockets, and I knew just having that coat, I was a, a robbery target, and uh people had tried me a few times, so I was basically at this point taking a little ratchet, uh, well shit like a, a little gun and a big gun with me everywhere I went. And I was in the Madness store, and when I got the money out, I, I, I left my pocket unzipped. And the people that run the Madness store uh, is uh, respected people in the, in, in the streets of D.C. And, and, you know, there's like one regular person in the front. And when I went, went to hand them the money, I had like this little two-shot Dillinger, and it fell out on the counter. And, man, like, like nine dudes just rushed out the back, like one second flat. One dude with a shotgun cocked that joint. Other motherfuckers with pistols on me and shit. And one none of them holding them sideways. Neither they was all. And, and, and it's like it's alright, man. It's alright, man. You, you you need to be careful. They, they let me buy the shit and they thought it was funny. But I ain't gonna lie, I damn near shit on myself. 